hog farm. Right, Keep away from all of rumors and, and pressures and whatnot. Yeah, that sounds like a good, a good way to get away from it. So this is Elisa Lynch with Ted Kubota, tape three of an oral history interview on the 30th of January, 2013. And we were talking about Santa Fe and, and you're going to Santa Fe. Um, did you have a job at Santa Fe that you worked when you were there? See, I am losing my memory here. That's okay. Yeah. So your, uh, I think it was your daughter, <coughs> Mary, had mentioned that uh, story that your mother had sent you a letter saying don't go to Japan, but that you didn't get the letter? Yeah, that, I didn't get that letter. Do you know why she sent you that letter? That I don't even have. Were you still in Santa Fe when the war ended? I think it was. Uh, mm -hmm. How did you hear? <coughs> How did you hear that the war ended? Gee, I don't recall what. Were you surprised that the United States had won the war? Well, I think so. Like, they used to have newspapers and whatnot, you know. But see, I, I was in, when the war ended, I, I was on a camp all night. Was I still in camp? I think you were still in Santa Fe, I think, in the paperwork anyway. So one of the things I had heard, and maybe, maybe it was Bill Nishimura that told me, I can't remember. Somebody who was in the Hoshidan told me that they felt like they had been misled because the Hoshidan always said Japan is going to win and you must be with us or you will have no future. And then when Japan didn't win, they felt like maybe they had been, you know, misled. So that's why I was asking if you were surprised or, or how you felt, uh, when you found out that Japan had not won, but you were scheduled to go back there. Bill didn't go back, huh? No, he didn't. Was, um, so you went, you went back though, you said on the second ship on the General Gordon, is that right? What was the what was the uh, trip to Japan like? Because you'd never been there before, right? No, I didn't have that. So what was it like to be preparing to go to a country you had never been to? I know that lady during the Korean War. I went to Korea. Did you, you served in Korea? Yeah, I served in Korea. Mm -hmm. So, uh, did you, did they give you an opportunity to not go to Japan? You know, like Bill was saying that they told him he didn't have to go to Japan if he didn't want to. Did they tell you you don't have to go or did they say you have to go? Yeah, I heard, I heard that, but it's a fact that... <clears throat> What happened that time? Jeez, I don't recall how uh -huh. whatever. But you went over. You went back on a. You went over on a ship. Yeah, I went right? back on a ship. And was that, was that the Gordon? Does that sound familiar? Gordon. The General Gordon. How long did that trip take you? I don't remember <laughs> how long it took. Did you it. get seasick? Yeah. Did you get seasick on the ship? Pizza. Seasick. Oh, seasick? No. <laughs> Did you get seasick. pizza? <laughs> no pizza? Uh, uh -huh. Where did you land in Japan? 
Do you remember where you disembarked? Uh, that one near, near Yokosuka. And when you got off the ship, uh, was there anybody there to meet you? I mean, did you, because your brother wasn't, no. wasn't with you, right? No, I wasn't either. I was, <clears throat> and when the time came, a certain part of Japan, certain people got a certain time and go back. That's how I went back. Mm -hmm. So when you arrived in Japan, where did you where did you go? Did you have family that you met up with? No, I went to my cousin's place. Yeah. So they were able to give you a place to live. No, they didn't. They didn't tell us where to live or what. So how did you, how did you? Uh, live in Japan? How did you feed yourself? How did you have a place to live? I lived with my cousin's place, uh -huh. which uh, he used to live in Canada. Yeah. But he passed away now, so I don't have any, any relatives. Did when, you? <clears throat> when did he go back to, when did he go to Japan from Canada? Was he there during World War II in Japan? No. I think I only went one time as a as a. When did your cousin leave Canada to go to Japan? Your my my cousin is a Japanese, Japan, mm -hmm. Japan citizen. Oh, but he had he had been to Canada and then went back mm -hmm. to Japan. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you know, uh, I've seen some of the pictures, uh, uh, some pictures of Japan in 1945, and I, I have visited Hiroshima, you know, and and read some of the accounts of how devastated Japan was after the war. What did you see in terms of the country that you arrived in there? I mean, did you see effects of war? Yeah, I saw all the, like Hiroshima, nothing left at Hiroshima. See, uh, my mother and my dad, they're from Yamaguchi. Yeah. So yeah, I met some people that went back before the war, and their, their family was I came back, when I came back, I went to see him and here in uh, Watsonville. So what would you say would be just the condition of, the living conditions in Japan when you got there? Oh, it was really, <clears throat> in fact, I think the people in Japan, maybe they were, they were, uh, I really like the way they they uh, had to live without rice, eat nothing but barley. You said they liked it. They they didn't like it. Oh, they didn't like it. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. And like uh, making mochi. The, the, at least they uh, use the rice pounder making uh, mochi. <laughs> I, I helped my my cousin do that. My cousin used to live in Canada. Yeah. Uh, how were you treated by people in Japan? Well, my people in Japan treated us. Just like ordinary Japanese, you know. How did how was your uh, Japanese? You said you didn't you kind of you didn't like going to Japanese language school. So how did you make it over there in speaking Japanese? Well, you know, amongst the family, use certain kind of language. That's how I got along. <laughs> Yankee Japanese. 
Did you, uh, did you have correspondence with your family back in the U.S. when you were in Japan? Yeah, because my brothers, they were over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But one of your brothers went to Japan also, Yeah, yeah. Right? Hey. Is that Genji? Yeah, Which fact, yeah. Genji? Yeah, my oldest brother. Gunji. Just Gunji, yeah. He went to Japan also? Yeah. Did he take, he had a family, right? A wife and children? Or was it just him? Yes. No, he took the family. Did you live with him over there? Or were you in contact yeah, with him? Yeah, I still live with him. And so you eventually, you said that you worked for the U.S. military? How did that come about? Oh, then, the, the Yamaguchi way back in the sticks, so I came back to, I, I came over to, to Yokohama. And, uh, I started working for Air Sea Rescue. That's an Air Force. Um, and what were you country. doing? What were you doing for them? I was doing interpreting. Heard interpreting and then uh, running the Japanese labor. Yeah, the Japanese labor, they must have had about 30 of them. Uh, that's excluding the house. Uh, uh, women's taking care of the laundry and whatnot, yeah. So you supervised Japanese yeah, crew? Uh -huh. how, did, how did they uh, respond to that, being supervised by an American? Well, the, they know that the country's uh, lost over the war, so, yeah. Did you still consider yourself an American when you were there? Or Japanese, because I mean, you had renounced, so technically, yeah. you were not, according to the government, you were not an American then. Yeah. But what was in your mind? Did you consider yourself then American or Japanese? Uh, I think the government don't didn't know that we renounced our citizenship because uh, the country that defeated already. Oh, so the Japanese government yeah, didn't Japanese know. government. But the American government, did they treat you any differently because you had renounced? No. Well, half of them didn't know what I was anyway. <laughs> what, what did you consider yourself? Uh, well, I considered that uh, I should be back to the U.S. government and so how did you how did you make that happen that you got back to the United States? How did that come about? <clears throat> See, I got married. Jeez, I I don't know exactly. But you, you met your wife in Japan, right? Yeah, I married in Japan. Uh, she didn't come back with me that time. Uh -huh. What is her name? Huh? What is your wife's uh, family name in Japan? Your, your wife's name? Tamako Suzuki. Huh? Tamako. Tamako Suzuki. Yeah, Tamako. Yeah. Suzuki. How how had um, do you know anything about how her family fared during the war? Her her family, like during the war, how were they impacted just as Japanese citizens during the war? Do you yeah. know if she lost family members or anything during the war? Well, they lost the uh, uncle and all the. Uh, the children, I think, they, they, they were all, you know. How did her family uh, accept you as a America Jean? Were they, did, they, did her family accept you? Oh, I must have been. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out, huh? 
Yeah, you know, uh, Arthur Ogami tells a story of how uh, his wife Kimi, how her parents thought he was a barbarian because he would knock at the door and then walk in with his shoes on, and they thought he was a barbarian. That's what they called him. <laughs> so how did it come about that you came back to the United States? What year did you come back? What year did they come back? 1953. And did you had children in, you have yeah. children born in Japan? Yeah. How many children do you have? Two. Two in Japan. Two, two children born in Japan, and what are their names? Ted, Julia, and Mary. Yeah. Do they have Japanese names too? Kunio. Kunio. Kunio and. Kunio, yeah. And what is uh, Mary? Does Mary have a Japanese name? Kikuyo. Kikuyo. Kikuyo, yeah. And did you have more children after you came back? Huh? Do you have children, more children, or just those two? Those two. We have three here. Three, yeah. Born here. Okay, so you have five children? Yeah. So what was it like when you came back to the United States? Well, uh, what I figured, gee, I should have stayed in Japan. Really? Because I had, to, I had a good job. <laughs> it was... No, no strenuous work, or anything. It just head work. <laughs> so why did you come back? Well, you know how it is. Sometimes you get homesick, huh? <laughs> so uh, were you able to bring your wife and your two children over at the same time you came, or did you have to send for them later? I sent some of them later. Uh -huh. About how much later? A year, huh? Well, maybe half a year. Half a year. So, where did you come back to? Did you join your family? Yeah, I joined my family in uh, really. Yeah. And how did you end up back in San Martin? <laughs> how did I get back in San Martin? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I share a crop with one of my uh, fellows that Lawrence Kogu Meadow that they used to go to high school together. He was well, two class ahead of me, but, you know. Did you reconnect with old friends like the girl, Betty, or whoever it was that you rode the bicycle with and other people that you went to school with? Did you get to pick up friendships again here? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So did you, uh, did you know Wayne Collins? Have you ever heard of Wayne Collins, the lawyer? Yeah. Did you work with him? I didn't work with him, but I know uh, he helped me out on, on my Get my citizenship back. Yeah. How, how did he do that? What did you have to do to get your citizenship back? Let's see. Who oh, helped me on that one? Well, actually, like my, my case, they, they didn't say that I lost my citizenship. It was Oh, because you were underage? Yeah. Okay, but you still worked with Wayne, yeah. Wayne Collins. Yeah, you went through a lot very young. Yeah. Yeah. So, just to um, fast forward a little bit, when uh, when in the nineteen eighties, you know, they started having these hearings about redress, and started talking about the camps and about having the government apologize and having redress. What did you think of that? Were you involved in that at all? No, I wasn't involved at all. Yeah. But what did you think when you heard they were going to do that? Do you think that was a good idea? How did 
did you feel when you got the letter? Did you get a letter of apology from the government? Yeah. And a check? How did you, how did you feel when you got that letter of apology? I never can tell. Were you surprised? Oh, no surprise. Well, I it's got to be U.S. too. What is it like? You said you went back and you visited Tule Lake. Have you ever visited Gila? Have you ever been back to Gila River? Tule Lake. No. Or Gila? Have you? You did visit. You visited Manzanar and Tule Lake. What is it like? today to go back and see the place. When you saw Tule Lake in 2010, what was that like for you emotionally to go back there? Gee, did I spend that much kind of time in the, Tule Lake here? Yeah. So what do you think it's most important for people to know about your life or about these camps? You know, in 50 years, you know, what, what would you want people to know about your story, what about your life? Well, I kind of feel that, you know, it was a rough life. But a life that uh, you never can, it's hard to repay. At least, if I stayed in Japan, I wouldn't have, have a piece of land that I could buy or anything. And so you have uh, your yeah. uh, whole farming operation here, right? This yeah. is. Could you tell us just a little bit about uh, how you spent your career in the business that you've built here in San Martin? Yeah. You had a, a nursery? See, how did I start the nursery? You were in row crop before, farming row crop before the nursery. But it looks like you have a very successful nursery here in a beautiful home. Well, I, it's a success, but it's nothing to brag about. <laughs> it's still very beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and you have some beautiful nekos, neko chans. Yeah. So what do you think... Just for our visitors at Manzanar, for, for us rangers, what do you want us to tell people or to teach people? I mean, why should we preserve these sites? Do you think it matters for people today? Yeah, well, I get it. What, why is it important to preserve it? Well, like I feel that a lot of the things that success I had, you can't buy with money either. Yeah. What did you think uh, during September 11th? You know, when people were talking about Arab Americans and how people should treat Arab Americans or other things? I mean, what did you think when you saw September 11th and how other people were treated? Do you think we've learned? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of, kind of, kind of a little hard to answer. Yeah. Is there anything that I didn't ask you about that you want to share with us? Yeah. Anything more that you want?